I think it's interesting. I think a lot of people just kind of assumed uh, with Matt Ryan's contract that, uh, you know, this was going to be a situation where they were not going to be in the quarterback market. And I still believe that, you know, as they do, that he still has good football left in him. I just, I, I question the opportunity you're going to have in the near future, picking where they're picking to be able to land the successor, to get somebody that's going to, you know, solve that position for a decade plus. Um, so to me, I think the opportunity uh, right there for them to take a quarterback, it would be too difficult for them to pass up. And then it comes down to which quarterback do you want? And in the scenario of this mock draft, it's really a decision between Justin Fields and Trey Lance. Um, I know a lot of folks will say, oh, gosh, bring Justin Fields back home. That makes the most sense. Uh, and off you go. And maybe not uh, as familiar with Trey Lance, having not watched a lot of North Dakota State football. Uh, but to me, Trey, I think both these guys have tremendous ability. Uh, but Trey gets a little bit of the nod for me just in terms of decision making, protecting the football. Um, and I think both guys offer a lot in terms of expanding your playbook with their athleticism. So uh, to me, I don't know that there's a wrong pick between the two, um, but this is why I had them go with Trey Lance. And the other big decision here is, say, the Terry Fano in his first draft, the Falcons has come out and said that he abides by the best player available approach, which is different than previous drafts because the mm -hmm. um, previous general manager was more focused on needs, um, as we've seen the last couple of years. But that's what makes this an interesting situation for the Falcons because, say, they're, when pick four comes around, if that third quarterback, or I guess well, that would be the fourth quarterback, isn't the best yeah. player on their board and say, you know, Kyle Pitts is, um, how do you weigh the value of hoping that you're not picking in the top five anytime soon, but you've also come out and said you believe in best player available? <laughs> yeah, that's a challenge. And I think everybody, you know, likes to, to give uh, lip service to that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there's a hierarchy when it comes to the positions. And you know, if I need if I need, uh, you know, a, a tackle, a corner and a pass rusher, um, then I'm, I'm good with taking the best player available when I don't know who's going to be the quarterback for my football team, you know, within a couple of years. And that could be a decade long uh, uh, trek through the wilderness to find the next guy. To me, that trumps everything. So I, I have Kyle Pitts as the second player in the draft. The only mm -hmm. quarterback I have ahead of him is Trevor Lawrence, who's going to be the first pick in the draft. So if I'm going to go purely off need individually, I'm taking Kyle Pitts with the fourth pick. But to me, I would take a good quarterback over a great tight end every day of the week because it's going to impact your team, not only in a bigger way in, in a year or two years, you're talking about is Matt, look how long Matt's been there. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to have a chance to have that position solidified for a decade plus. That would be too difficult for me to pass up. 